So in the last video we looked at topic selection and we looked at the most frequently asked questions which were where can I start to find a good topic, how can I narrow down my topic, how can I know that I have a good topic, how can I know that the topic is appropriate for me and how can I change uh, my topic? Under what circumstances can I change my topic? So today I'm assuming that you have gotten a good topic and now you want to move on to the next step. And that is research objectives, uh, research questions and research hypotheses. My name is Nelson and welcome to the Rhinesynth Advisory channel. Please remember to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell to get more videos like this. What are research objectives? Research objectives are usually a statement of intent of the researcher. The researcher is trying to tell us what they intend to do. And usually they have action verbs such as to determine the association between remuneration and performance. Okay, so it, it gives us an idea of what um, the researcher wants to do and they are in essence uh, a, a topic statement that has been given an action verb uh, per se. So what are the types of objectives? So there are different classifications of objectives and I'm going to start with the most general one, the most common one and that is uh, general objectives and specific objectives. So what are general objectives? General objectives are also uh, referred to as purpose. In some other uh, books, you'll find them referred to as uh, the aim of the study. And it gives us a general overview of the intent of the researcher. What does the researcher intend to do? Okay, so like I gave you the example to determine the association between remuneration and, um, and performance, right? The specific objectives are a breakdown of the general objectives. Usually they break down the concept into smaller sub-concepts. So for instance, um, to determine um, the relationship between salary and performance, okay? Or to determine the, re the, the relationship or the influence of uh, allowance, allowances and uh, remuner and sorry and uh, performance okay or to investigate the role of fringe benefits on performance so you can see we have the action verbs and then we also have these other nouns that um, that give us what we are likely to actually get as the outcome of this study so that is one classification then we have another classification where we are talking in terms of uh, whether it's a primary objective or whether it's a secondary objective. Now, primary objectives are usually the focus of the research study, like the ones I've just talked about. Then a secondary objective is an ancillary objective, something extra, additional information that may not be of so much focus of the study. So, for instance, in, in this scenario where we are looking at remuneration, you may want to look at welfare, the effect of welfare on remuneration as a secondary objective but it's not your focus okay yeah so that is the other classification then we have one more classification and that classification is based on the verbs that we use okay the action verbs and the nouns and that is um, for instance uh, the first one is descriptive objectives so they are descriptive objectives and these these ones usually describe they are used to describe a phenomena a study which is going to describe a phenomena for instance to describe the prevalence uh, or incidence of a disease um, and then we have uh, what we call explanatory objectives or analytic objectives these ones are usually uh, testing or determining associations to determine the association between uh, salary and performance so those are explanatory uh, objectives then we have uh, the third category which is evaluative objectives so these evaluative objectives they are their their role is to actually determine the impact or effect of a certain intervention or process on an outcome so for instance to evaluate eh, or the to determine the effect of salary on performance so that is an evaluative objective so those are the different types of objectives so once you're able to determine those objectives then how do you know you have a good objective so a good objective is usually smart 
Okay, SMART is S-M-A-R-T, and those are abbreviations. The S stands for specific. So your, your objective has got to be specific. Okay, for instance, in an example where you're looking at the, uh, to determine the relationship between salary and performance, someone else could say to determine the relationship between maybe money and uh, and performance now money is a broad is a broad uh, concept money could mean salary it could mean uh, allowance it could mean a gift it could mean uh, a tip so there are so many so you need to narrow down salary if you want to be very specific then measurable it has got to be measurable okay so when you look at salary salary is measurable you can get a payroll and you're able to get an actual number uh, of, of money that someone is earning in a given period okay then it has got to be attainable okay so that means it has got to be feasible it has got to be something you are able to do and we looked in the previous video at what makes uh, a topic feasible you're able to access the population uh, you're able to conduct the study with the resources and the time that you have and also maybe the geographical accessibility so that is what makes a topic uh, attainable and feasible and then uh, an objective has got to be um, uh, relevant, okay? So in the, in, the, in the example that we're talking about remuneration, someone else might have that objective of to determine the relationship between housing and performance. Yes, housing is talking about welfare, but it may not be relevant because we are looking at remuneration and housing is not remuneration. You're not given a house every month. Okay, you're given a house as a facilitation for your work. So that uh, won't be relevant for what you're trying to study. Then um, an objective has got to be time bound. So time bound means you have got to give it a time frame. Certain measures, uh, for instance, disease measures such as prevalence and incidence have got to have a time frame to them. Otherwise, they don't give us... Uh, they don't make sense. If you're looking at the prevalence of malaria in Uganda, if you don't tell us whether it's a, it's an annual prevalence, a prevalence of five years, a 10-year prevalence, we won't know what that prevalence is all about. So a specific objective, a good objective has got to be time-bound as well. So basically, that's all about objectives. Now, when you're done with objectives, you go to research questions, okay? And research questions are now more of an operationalization of the objectives. We are starting to think. We're starting to have some analytic reasoning. We're trying, we're starting to generate answers to our research. So that is the starting process actually of the research now. So usually we use open-ended questions like what is the relationship between salary and, uh, and performance? What is the effect of, okay, uh, fringe benefits on performance? So our research, our findings will answer the actual research questions okay and the research questions are also a framework onto which a literature review is conducted so the literature review is the initial step of answering those questions so we try to answer the questions using literature and where we find gaps we hope that our study will actually fill those gaps and either confirm what literature has found as answers to those questions or refute so basically that's what research questions are and the the types also really uh, follow those of the objectives then we have a research hypothesis so a research hypothesis is now our next step from a from a research question and research hi hypothesis bas basically um answers a tentative answers to the research question so for instance the question what is the um effect of salary on remuneration uh, a hypothesis could be that um uh, there is a positive relationship between salary and remuneration, right? So that is now a hypothesis. Now, the thing about hypothesis is hypotheses are claims because we have not yet done the study. Either claims that are based on uh, either literature, that are based on experience of the researcher, that are based on some cultural beliefs, okay? Or that are based on some other maybe theory or experiment that has been done, okay? But they need to be proven, especially in different co contexts. So when you state a hypothesis, their expectation is that you're going to test it and tell us whether that hypothesis is true, whether there is evidence to back up that hypothesis. Um, so what are the types of, of hypotheses? So we have what we call the alternative hypothesis, and then we have what we call the null hypothesis. So the alternative hypothesis is actually now the tentative answer to the question. For instance, there's a relationship between allowance and remuneration. Now that is an alternative um, association. A null association tends to refute 
that kind of claim of a relationship. So in our hypothesis may state there is no relationship between okay, a salary and uh, and performance. So so null hypotheses are often uh, statements that bring us back to the zero point where there is no relationship between the independent and the dependent variables. Concepts which we shall look at in, in some other videos, right? Basically, that is that is it. And we usually test those hypotheses using what we call statistical tests. Uh, that we shall look at. Not all studies need hypotheses. Usually, hypotheses are required when you're dealing with uh, the objectives which are explanatory and analytical. Uh, descriptive objectives don't need hypotheses. Okay, and we shall look at that later when we are looking at study designs, because the study designs are the ones which are also determine whether we need a hypothesis or not. Okay. Yes, so basically that is it. So I've given you a brief about um, the research objectives, the research questions, and the research hypothesis. Thank you so much for watching this video. My name is Nelson. Please remember to subscribe and hit the notification button if you've liked the video. Have a lovely day. Bye-bye.